Good morning, everybody. Christian from Student Education with my analysis this morning for Thursday, the 18th of October 2018. Hi, guys. Okay, so let's have a look at the matrix. Uh, Going to just stop it here if you can and just pause for a moment to see if there's anything on the chart that really catches your eye. Uh, remember, however, that there's still day two of the EU Economic Summit. And the hot topic is going to be Prime Minister May and Brit Exit in particular trying to sell her version of the divorce agreement and the EU sitting back and trying to understand what it is that she wants. However, that that's going to be the, the most important part. There's also the Italian news, I take it, that's probably going to focus then. If you are looking at that news as uh, as a riskier or uh, or the main topic point for today, then any pairs that you're trading euro or pound related crosses do so with caution because obviously there's going to be an increase in volume of volatility during the course of today. Uh, speculators will be speculating as to what's been said and how it's interpreted, and that's going to lead to uh, large swings especially on the intraday time frames so i'm going to spend time looking at the the four majors after this 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 quick, quick brief look overview of the the matrix and we'll spend more time looking at those top two here on the left hand corner in more detail you can see at the moment now the currency they're both looking negative uh, after Theresa may's um stalling tactics it seems as though the the, the conservative member would like to see a another year extension on uh, on on the time frame, which is not going down all that well currently. We have the the agreement was that we need to have something finalised by the nineteenth of March, twenty nineteen. Otherwise, we left the the custom union. It seems as though she would like to have some sort of um, uh, an extension on their deadline which is not going down too well currently so that's going to effectively going to have play play a negative part on price action and clearly we are seeing that against uh, some of the pairs however notice that we are still seeing uncertainty on number of the pound and euro crosses especially against the risk appetite or commodity crosses in this particular case the uh, euro Australian dollar you can see the pound Australian dollar you can see the, uh, the euro New Zealand uh, pound New Zealand uh, euro CAD and pound CAD pairs in particular. You can even go as far as to the euro chief, pound chief. You can look at the euro yen, pound yen. There's clearly a divide where we see, we, we've seen a noticeable upside market trend over recent months. However, that's being eroded uh, recently by this, inter, this intraday negativity that's popped into the market. Other than that, one I would choose personally to look at other crosses that don't reflect either the pound or the yen, oh, sorry, the, the pound or the euro in any of them, which limits the amount of crosses that we can trade. I say that for all the in individuals out there who are still trading off small accounts. There's going to be heightened volatility. We need volatility, don't get me wrong. We need it to be directional volatility, so trend directional volatility. However, that volatility comes with major swings, highs and lows during the intraday time period. And if you guys are trading on small account sizes, you're going to find that that volatility is going to exceed your maximum uh, stop loss risk reward ratio. So in most cases, you're going to be trading with an adverse risk reward where your stop loss um, is going to be far greater than your reward outcome and that's going to have an undermining or detrimental effect to your money management side of things so in this case it's far better to stand back look at the big or wait for the bigger market moves to occur Brit exit is certainly one of those we've seen a lot of consideration on both these parties the euro against your dollar the pound against your dollar and i'll show you that on the charts next but we've seen uncertainty and that's been uh, shown in more detail on the candlesticks themselves so therefore it'd be far better if we look at something like the economic summit we're having at the moment now the european um, economic summit that we're having this could in fact give us a more of a directional view of trend continuation for the months ahead at, at least till the end of the year uh, that in itself will then give us more probability and less risk if we have a continued flow on some other very strong positive data or some very negative data and I'm going to show you a couple of examples uh, after this look at the matrix. 
Um, so as I mentioned to you, so it started looking at crosses outside of the euro and pound themselves. So you could look at the Australian New against the New Zealand dollar, Australia against the Canadian dollar, Australia against the yen, uh, Australia against the Swiss franc, and that goes for euro. Uh, sorry, the New Zealand against those those crosses and the CAD against those crosses. Do you do that just for the time being? I say that just because the I don't want to get. Uh, to, to to get you guys into a position where you are either long or short on the pound or the euro cross and the volatility kind of just gets in the way of things and it's you end up with a losing trade in most cases when you have a major news announcement it's far better for you, for for the individual or the trade themselves to rather sit on the fence and wait for that market data to become applicable to then be absorbed by the market and then to be interpreted by those those individuals who carry the liquidity out there and then what we can do is just piggyback on that sentiment okay great traders look for those signs a good detective work is is required and once we can understand that yes there's clearly a continuation of trend in those particular pairs then we can trade with certainty that we have less risk we're limiting our risk which is most important because on any cross to be trade there's always going to be a risk factor so we can limit the amount of risk that we're trading at any one time. That raises the probability stakes. And that to you and I is a win-win scenario. Okay, so I'm just going to now move on to the four majors this morning. I'm going to start with the euro against US dollar. And I've got the chart open down the bottom here. So let me just double click on that. There we go. So now I'm using the Forex Made Easy template. Okay, this is a level entry template for all our new students out there. So it's made up of a number of indicators, not a hell of a lot. But the principles are just to get a solid foundation in terms of trading, in terms of support and resistance lines, moving averages, which work in a trend bias in, uh, um, scenario. And then we have two others down the bottom, which is a momentum indicator, which is the MACD. And then we have the relative strength index, which is actually an oscillator, but it gives us a positive or negative aspect in terms of if it's below the midline or below the 50% level, then we're looking for negativity. And that should also be, uh, it should actually be moving with price. It's a relative strength of price. So if price action is falling, we need to see the RSR doing exactly that. If price action is moving higher, then the relative strength should be mimicking that in the actual line itself. When we see convergence and divergence on the RSR, that is a yield, a warning sign, a pre-warning sign to potentially a greater change in direction over the following weeks or months and that's pretty much what I'm using it for in this clear case so um, I've got a line over here that I've drawn already this morning you can clearly see that the year against US dollar actually corrected over multiple uh, years 2015 2016 and the start of 2017 we saw price testing the same level over time so if you look over here for example this first correction all the down here was well over sold on the relative strength index trading below the 30% level Notice the second attempt over here, at the same level, you'll see that the RSI is weaker, i.e. it's not on the same level as the first initial move. So that tells us at this point over here, that even though we did see selling into the same level, there was less selling momentum, okay, which is a concern. Because if we're seeing genuine selling at this particular point, we want to see, obviously, that continue to the downside. That failed to materialize because there was less genuine sellers at this particular point. And then notice, we actually saw a correction, so... Price was in this this consideration correction. Then the third attempt at the same level, okay, here, same level. So third attempt at the same level, notice that the RSI now is above the 30 and far stronger than the two previous attempts. So now we have, clearly, as price is moving to the same point over time, the relative strength index is indicating that the relative strength of sellers in price action is weakening. Okay, so less selling sentiment on each of these attempts to the downside, which is a concern because essentially if you're in a downtrend and you're seeing more selling coming into the factor, you want to see obviously the relative strength indicating that, i.e. falling lower than the previous ones to indicate, yes, there are more sellers currently on board than there, were, there was on the previous attempt and the previous attempt to that. That wasn't the case on this particular one. So that indicated that at this particular point, we should not have been looking to sell outright because there wasn't a genuine uh, reason or com a confirmation that from the market that there were clearly genuine sellers at that particular point. So the relative strength index is, a, is almost like a Swiss army knife, a multi-tool. So even though uh, uh, it, it indicates 
relative strength of price. So anything above 50 would be classified as positive. Anything below 50 is classified as negative. So you can clearly see here on this move up here, the RSI spent more time above it. And if you look over through from this point to this point over here, you can see RSI was low. And then over here, RSI was up. Okay, so it's meant to give us, it's, it should be moving with price action. So price is moving high and closing high, the relative strength should be moving high and closing high as well. It's when price actually moves higher and the RSI moves lower, then we go, hang on a moment, what's the issue here? Because price is moving high, but the relative strength of that price action is not relative to the underlying sentiment of that move, then who's driving the market? It could be speculators because clearly the big money is not in the market so therefore we should warrant not to get into the trade at that particular point right so now we've got that out the way this is my concern here on the hard right edge and we're looking at monthly charts now so you can see that over one two three four previous months we saw a lot of indecision on the candles. When I say indecision, we, well, I'm talking about the size of the candle and I'm talking about the actual body of the candle as well. So we did get volume because the actual candle sells themselves, the, the actual high and low point is extended. We're looking in excess here on average 300, um, 270 over here. This is going to be quite a big one of 450. So give an average of around about that 280, 300 mark on average, it's been moving. But they're not full body candles. They actually got a lot of shadow or wick, as we like to call them. So that's a concern because it tells you that there's been a lot of pullbacks. So it's been a lot of selling initially, and then a lot of uh, uh, pullbacks, then a lot of buying, then pullbacks, then selling, then pullbacks. It tells us that traders are not leaving the contracts open for long periods of time. Otherwise, you would end up with something that looks exactly like that. Or like that full body candles everybody's moving collectively in one direction there's no hesitation between the buyers and the sellers in either direction and that makes for great trend extension when you start to see this we're pricing on making new lows has attempted the new lows and then pulls back within this it tells us that the the actual traders are indecisive they are apprehensive and actually collectively holding the positions either short or long and that's a concern because that doesn't give us a broader view that everybody's positive about continue to sell or positive continue to buy and we don't want to be in a market like that because when you see apprehension or uncertainty price goes sideways we don't trade hesitation hesitation is not a good sign okay it's it it's not conducive for better trading practice so when you start to see prolonged periods of, of uncertainty over months not just hours um, we're talking about months of data then it's far better for us to then treat it with a lot of risk and a lot of respect and say hey not interested at the moment now however what you're looking for is a directional candle a continuation so if you think of where we were trading at the start of the year all the way up here into the 200 period moving average which was a previous support and resistance factor and we saw a break of that 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 said that bullish sentiment and it broke low again we've been carrying negative sentiment through this year because she hasn't made a new high recently she's actually been falling okay so therefore if there is clearly continued selling sentiment as our, our prognosis for the future we need to see price falling lower essentially crossing below this support mechanism which is the 50 pair moving average because the 50 has done a fantastic job of resisting price in the past so clearly if we are to look for continued selling price needs to collectively sell so the market needs to come in now and continue to sell and by the end of this month or november or december or january february march of next year price needs to close below the 50 period moving average therefore enforcing that yes we do have a collective sell mentality where everybody in the room is selling and that would then take this area over here as a viable target level because we've been at this particular point on multiple occasions over multiple years so that would be a fantastic take profit level okay and you at the same case if I just get rid of, all the, rid of all that on the chart you'll see that price currently at the moment now is trading at a ceiling level okay so we had a support mechanism through 2015 we had a ceiling level see the candles all the way up 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 into here but fell to close high we also had the 2016 resistance level highs we had the 2016 end supports so you can see hesitation on here. So if we break below this major support and resistance level, 
then ultimately price is going to be moving back within this consolidative range, which would then mean that price would then look to target that level over the coming months. Okay, the RSI was flat. Okay, relative strength the price. Price is not going anywhere. Relative strength it should be doing exactly that. And sure enough, it has. Here on the hard right edge, however, you can start to see selling coming in and the RSI is starting to drop below. So it's moving with positive. It's moving with price. So that's good. It's negative, okay, because it's below the 50% level. The MACD, momentum. The fast line is now trending below the slow line, which is a negative sign. Okay, the histograms are tracking below and getting stronger on negativity. So that's another negative sign. Okay, the 50 pair moving average is currently supporting price. And ideally in a trend, we cannot afford to have price trading above a moving average if she's selling. It's got to be below. Pri uh, moving averages are either supporting price or resisting price. So they've got to work together. We cannot afford to have price trading between. So you can clearly see here, the 200 pair moving average is resisting price. But currently, price is now finding support on the 50. Ideally, what we need to see if we are looking for continued selling, price needs to be below both moving averages. So there again, a reason why we need to be standoffish and look to see how October fares to see where this candle closes. Because if this candle does not close below the 50 again, then the likelihood we're going to end up looking at another spinning top or doji, which is a sign of apprehension, indecisiveness between buyers and sellers. And clearly, that does not give us a viable reason to be trading this because the risk is just far too great to hold it okay any trading you trade you you're doing currently right now within this month comes at added risk there you don't have a decisive continuation taking place so therefore we don't have this probability factor where we know for, for certainty that eight out of every ten traders are selling here when you have indecision it's literally 50 50 it's five are selling and five are buying not good for trend trading okay so just take that on board just clean that all up uh, we drop down to the week now there again you can see that line that this 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 um, horizontal line that I drew on the chart on the monthly which represents that support and resistance level we need to be trading below that okay you can clearly see that we did trade below that here in July of this year however most of the actions been taking place above that particular point Okay, you can clearly see before we also had some hesitation here. So there is clearly a consolidation factor at this particular point. Notice, however, when we do close low, we also have the 200 pair moving average below that. So essentially, this is the, the Bermuda rectangle of trading. Any trading within this rectangle comes at heightened risk. Okay. My uh, drawing tool here is taking, it's meant to say risk, by the way. Sorry, guys. Drawing tool is playing catch up. Uh, not good. Uh, anyway, but you can see over here, though, if I'm looking for, if I'm trading in a negative trend, you can see that price has currently gone sideways between the two moving averages, which is not great either. Okay, so we need to be trading below the 50, which we currently are. Check. But we're not trading below the 200 pair moving average, which is a concern. Okay. Notice the RSI is still overbought um, over what oversold which is a good sign because it tells us there's still negative sentiment around and the MACD however because we've gone sideways for so long you can see people who initially sold here through January February March and April were in the market okay so we had selling sentiment through here because the fast line was below the slow line the history was getting stronger however when we moved into this particular point of long-term support and resistance you can start to see there were less sellers around and the history told us that and now you can see here on the hard right edge, the fast line is above the slow line now, which is more of a positive sign. Okay, But there again, we haven't made a new low. We're actually going sideways. So you're starting to see less sellers. Therefore, the momentum is starting to shift, to, 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 to shift down between selling outright at the start of the year to now buying coming in as we see more of a supporting factor. Okay, We're still not out of the woods because the RSI has not crossed above the midline yet. Relative strength of price would have to get above the 50 the RSI would get above here, and the MACD would then continue to make higher histogram highs, and that would then bring into the fact of the, the highs over here, the start of the January high, as a viable target level for the foreseeable future. So here again, as I mentioned to you, I need to see price trading above the weekly pivot, I mean, the weekly monthly level, a 50 period moving average level, to be more conducive of a major correction or higher to the highs in January, or a break below the 200 to give me a more decisive reason to continue to sell openly 
to target the 2016-2017 low point as a viable target for the foreseeable future. As long as she's trading within this area here, between the 50 and, and between the 200, there is no trading because it's just too risky a position to be holding. 